Coming up, it's our monthly report card episode where I share wins and losses from the previous month, which includes another Apple feature. That's four months in a row, baby. Also, I'm going to share some of the struggles and difficulties that I'm having as an agency owner and entrepreneur. You asked me to get personal, so I'm going to do just that. Stay tuned. What is up, everybody? This is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.co, giving you the latest and greatest from our agency and from things that have just been going on. Before we get started, I want to tell you about a couple of different blog posts that you have to check out. I literally just 5x downloads and double downloads for one of my clients using just purely ASO. So if you want to see this, I'm going to put a blog post together that shows you the two strategies, the simple strategies that I use to literally double and even 5x downloads for this one client. I was super excited when I saw it because as I'll get to a little bit later, August was sort of a rough month for us. We had a lot of launches, but you guys asked for me to be a little more personal in terms of some of the struggles I'm going with. So I'll start off with all the good stuff. Start off with the good news, and then I'll go into more of the personal struggles in the later episode or in later in the episode. And by, besides, if you haven't noticed, it's unedited, unedited, unfiltered, just raw Steve P. Young. All right, here we go. Let's get started. So I'm gonna do these a little bit differently now from the previous month. We had 11 app launches, and rather than showing the icons, I'm just gonna show you 11 app launches. That's what it is. So we actually had a couple of different clients that just wanted us for. Small PR, this was a friend of mine that we got, I got to know a little bit. So I did that one, and then one that just hired us to help them get featured by Apple. So not all of them were pure like full-on launches, but nine full-on launches, and I guess two just small little launches, but really successful smaller ones. So, But in total, wow, what a busy month. 11 app launches, just to give you an idea of some of the success, and you can get my batting average based on these 11 launches. All right, so let me tell you about this. Now, if you remember this, this is Bali Five, a great game that you have to check out. We helped the we helped Jonas, and I hope to get him on the podcast soon. But we helped him get featured by Apple in twelve countries, including Canada and Australia. So, one tip that I'll give you, and something I've been telling clients is, a lot of people think that they want a soft launch in Canada, they want a soft launch in Australia. Well, if you don't notice, if you have a game here, if you notice this, this is the Canadian App Store. Games are actually the the first row. I'm like, Canadians love their games, right? Because in the US app store, it's actually swapped. Games are in the second row and the new apps we love is in the first row. So what I've been telling everybody is to soft launch in Norway, hi Aurora, or other like smaller countries that are English speaking rather than Canada. Don't use Canada anymore because I find it as a way of, you know, this is a way that you can get easily featured by Apple. So save Canada, save Australia for your worldwide launch in hopes that you can possibly get featured by Apple. And this is especially true for games. Okay, with Bollyfied, so that was a tip. Let me tell you why I'm bringing this up again. As a reminder, we he's actually featured in the US App Store with a big old banner. Check that out, isn't that beautiful? And we got him the category feature, but now, because Apple really loves this game and it's a really, really well done game. They they asked for some banners and we got some banners. So this is in the word category of the games category, but you see this beautiful banner and that brings me so much stinking joy to see this. It's really amazing. So, and Jonas is such a great guy to work with. I absolutely love him. I said, hey Jonas, you know, keep me posted. Hopefully we can get you in the, the homepage of the Apple App Store when you have an update, like a big update that we can then pitch to Apple. Okay. We, all, we actually, so this was one feature, the category feature with the banner. We actually got another client featured by Apple. The, the app was actually featured in Canada and a few other UK countries, but he had relationships in UK already. He really wanted our help for the US and the North America in general. He doesn't, so the thing is, he's gonna come later. Thing is he doesn't want people to know that we work together. So I said, fine, whatever. So I, I pixelated the icon. 
Okay, <laughs> I pixelated it, but here it is. It was featured in the US App Store under the educational category. So we got a category feature, but we got him a homepage feature in Canada. So and I think we've gotten really good. If you're keeping track, this is four months in a row with at least a homepage Apple feature in certain countries, four months in a row. And I think we've gotten really good in terms of the process. It's patented. <laughs> patented in. <laughs> I don't even not say that word, but <laughs> it's our own unique process. And we've kind of figured out a way to do it so that, you know, it doesn't seem so sneaky. And we find that while I can share you, you know, you have the strategies. It's I've shared all the ways we've done it. I think it's still the storytelling part. Like, how do you get their attention? What does Apple really want to hear from you? So I think we've gotten really good with that. But at the same time, you know, this is one, well, I guess two, well, one of 11 app launches, 10 app launches that we had that wanted to get featured by Apple, that we helped try to get featured by Apple. So it's one of 10, all right? And we want to be honest, open and honest. So it's very rare, but I knew this one had a high chance because he had some real good social proof and it is a really well done app. All right, one of the smaller clients we helped too with just sort of the PR stuff, got him onto Mashable, really great app, Dials. You got to check it out. If you're looking for a sunrise replacement like I am, go check out Dials. It is. It makes the, app, the your calendar look like a watch. It's a really, really cool design, really unique in a way. And we helped them get on Mashable. We also helped them get on Netted. Now, it's a great site. If you guys haven't checked out Netted, they don't have huge amounts of traffic if you look at their traffic numbers, but really, really dedicated, engaged group. And... I found out about them because primarily because the client wanted to get on this site. So I reached out to them. They loved it. They featured it. And I be, now have a pretty decent relationship with the editor there. But really, really awesome site. And you have to check it out because I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but they've done a great job of really highlighting some really cool products. And I found some products of my own, non-clients that I was like, whoa, this, this app's pretty cool. So sticking on Netted, we actually helped another client get featured on Netted as well. And this is a work group, and it's going to be one of the tools that I recommend at the end of the show, but we've moved all our clients onto work group. So I know a lot of you probably listening to the show, you use Slack, you love Slack, but I got to tell you, if you run an agency or you're working with clients a lot, go check out work group. It's workgroup.im. Now, they did hire us for PR, and we got them onto Netted and a few other sites, but the... The thing I'll tell you is what the one thing I hate about Slack is that I have to remember everybody's domain and then I have to remember my username and password for them. Now, I just made all my passwords the same thing, but at the same time, it's like, come on, like, why do I have to remember this? And what I love about Workgroup is it's so simple and I can log in with Google, one simple login, I see all my different teams on there. So every single client has their own unique work group and then I can communicate with them. And then obviously there's an app so that if they have any questions, I can literally respond in real time. So it's a great way for me to manage our clients and make sure everything's moving along. Cause that's one of the things I heard from my clients is like, hey Steve, I have no idea what you're doing. I have no idea what you're doing. I'm like, well, we are doing stuff and that's what the nature of the PR business is. But at the same time, I don't want to pull up email and get distracted by other incoming emails and then other things that happen within email. I can just open up work group and just say, hey, look, this is what's happening right now. Give them a quick little update and move on with my day and really stay productive. So from a PR perspective, I feel like we're doing great. We got another client on Social Times, another client on tech.co and all this stuff. But these are the two big wins for us because Netted was a new site and a really great site that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention as well. So if you want to check out Netted, actually, it's netted.net, netted.net. So N-E-T-T-E-D.net. All right. Now I know this is the juicy part. Okay. <laughs> this is what you guys want to hear. So what really worked, I would just, I'm going to kind of transform this into like just some of the things I did over August. So I read this book, called Built to Sell, really phenomenal book, especially if you're running an agency, it really talks about how to build your company so that you can obviously sell it. Now, I'm not looking to sell, but at the same time, I thought there's some very valuable lessons in there. And the biggest takeaway for me, I've been so proud of the fact that I haven't been, I don't have to do any outbound sales. All I do is create content. I've got this bot podcast, I've got the blog, but the, the book really taught me that maybe, hey, I should 
think about a predictable revenue model and put in sales teams in place because as I'll share with you in the struggles, you know, August was sort of a down month, although down months aren't really that down anymore for me, luckily, but at the same time it was a down month, you know, in July we did phenomenal in August went back down and I think September will go back up. So instead of seeing this up and down trend with that book taught me is if I put a sales team in place and maybe do a little bit of outbound, it'll be more, a little bit more predictable than having to just go up and down, up and down. I could just stay a little bit more stable. And the other tool, so I'll just recommend a book and I'll recommend a tool. Tool I've mentioned already, it is a client, so full disclosure, but I do really love them. I was using the software way before they became a client. It's part of the reason why they want to hire us because we knew the software in and out. <clears throat> but workgroup.im, you got to check it out, especially if you're running an agency or you're managing clients and you don't want to create a Slack domain for every single client, which I did not want to do, then go check out workgroup.im. Really cool soft piece of software. And right now the best part is it's all free. I don't know when they're going to start charging. Hopefully not anytime soon because we've got all our clients on there, but really, really good piece of software. Okay. Let's go into some of the struggles. What I want to ask you for is a favor. If you want to come on. So I got a lot of great feedback from people who listened to the fireside chat with Gab, Gabriel Mascheret. And it was a great back and forth conversation with him and I, he, we obviously knew each other for a very long time. He knew a lot about what we did. And so we had this really comfortable relationship and really cool talk. And I'm going to be doing more of this as I gotten some really good feedback with it. But if you're in the audience and I haven't interviewed you or you want to come onto the show or you want to just ask me anything, email me. I'm going to look really stupid if nobody emails me. So the first person to do that, I'd love for you to come on. Let's record this episode, you can ask me anything you want and I could ask you questions. I can maybe help you out. But the thing that I heard from that gap conversation, that episode was that people want to hear more of my personal side. Like what are the things I'm struggling with? They like hearing that type of stuff that everybody's struggling with. So I'm going to try to highlight that in the interviews, but it's harder. It's hard for me to just sort of say it because I have to take notes. And if you catch me on a good day, like today, I'm feeling really good. So I might not be able to come up with some of the struggles, but if you are on the other side, asking me questions, I'm really, I'm able to obviously open up just like I was able to open up with gap. So if you want to do it, email me right away with the subject line, personal struggles, personal struggles. And then the first one to email me will come onto the podcast and we can talk about whatever you got going on as well and get exposure through the audience. I just love collect, connecting with people. So please, please, please email me. All right, let's go through some of the struggles. I'm going to be really honest with everything. The, the first one is, I, I continue to struggle with this. Do I want to be a product company or an agency? And you know, like I always want to do more than, because sometimes I've had a couple of difficult clients and I don't want to work with them anymore, right? Like I, <laughs> one of the clients, I, I, I should have fired him and I, I really should have done that. But again, it was a down month. And so, and I thought that we can do some really good things together, help him with an Apple feature and so forth. But I should have, I should have fired him in the very beginning. And I think I'm going to do that no matter what moving forward. If there's just some guy I don't like to work with. I mean, there's actually one that I'm doing one with right now. I'm just like, look, man, this is our process. If you don't want to work together, then get the hell out of here. It's okay. Right. And so it's the power of no. And it feels empowering. I just says, go away. <laughs> like you don't want to work with us in our process, then don't work with us period. Right. So I have to get better at that. And I, I'm starting to, but I always struggle with the agency versus product. Cause I do want to eventually build a product and, you know, I think we'll get there, but every single time I, every time I think about it, I always want to build a product. So that's a big struggle of mine. The other thing is slow, and building on a team. That's the note I took. But I'm just trying to slowly build the agency. You know, one of my big goals was to hit a million in sales. And part of that is because I was reading Built to Sell and they said very few companies, like very, such a small, small, small percentage of companies, businesses actually hit a million in sales. And that was like a challenge to me. <laughs> I'm a pretty competitive guy. And I said, wow, okay, challenge accepted. Let's do this. But at the same time, I do love my, what I just shared on Instagram today with my life work balance. I got to work a little bit this morning and my daughter was just, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. My daughter was on my iPhone. She was watching YouTube, just kind of hanging out right by, right beside me. And I was doing a little bit of client work. It's probably about an hour that I spent just kind of finishing up client work. 
And then we went to the park and I took her to the park. That's where my Instagram photo came in. And then we, went to, we had lunch and now I worked towards the, the afternoon when my wife was now taking care of the kids. See, I love, I love that. And a part of me feels like I don't wanna give that up, right? Like I love that I can balance life and work, not work and life. It's life first and then work. And so, but at the same time, I wanna hit that million. So it's like this two diff, like the product versus agency, two different ends of the spectrum just pulling at me all the time. And I really have to slow down. So I think moving forward, I do journal a lot. One of the things I'm gonna write is just take it slow, man. Like just slow down and relax. <laughs> Part of me is like, I go, to, I go to sleep and I don't really sleep well because I wanna work, but I'm tired. So I should sleep, but I don't sleep well because I wanna work and I wanna get things done and I wanna grow really fast. And I wanna double last year's revenues. So, but at the same time, I love my life. We have a great life. We have a great family great house and and I have to be I'm really happy and so if that just means giving up a little bit building a business slower then I have to be happy with it and saying out loud actually makes me feel better so thanks for listening all right the last thing I want to leave with is the difficult clients so I don't want to share who it is or who these clients are but we did pretty well for them but at the same time I think this is if you ever considered working with me just know that I always have your back always. And I think I just wish people just treated others like friends because that's what I do. And for other clients where we didn't do, there's one client where we just, I feel like we completely failed them. And I, I told them, I was honest with them, said, Hey, you know, I'm trying my best. I just can't do anything. This is really hard. I didn't know whether I should tell you or not, but I talked to my wife and we, so I, she said, you should. So I, I'm telling you right now, they're just like, Steve, it's all right. You know, we know it's hard. We felt it too. We know you're doing your best, so just relax, man. We got, we trust you. That's why I wanted to work with you. I was like, wow, you guys are so great. And so I, to them, I'm just like, look, guys, let's continue. Like, no matter what the agreement says, let's continue working together. Just keep me posted. If there's anything I can do to help out, I'm willing to help out. And I just wish most people took that approach. And that's just the approach I have with things. But I, when I work with difficult clients, it's just like one client where I broke the agreement a little bit. So most people pay me up front and then we do the work. And that's just how it usually goes. This one client, I really want to work with them because, you know, they had a good brand name. And I was just like, oh, I really want to work with you guys. And so they said, look, we don't pay for anything up front. I'm like, all right, fine, fine, fine. Like, I want to really work with you. So let's do half, half. And I don't normally do that, but I did it. And I regretted doing that. And so now it's just, you know, I got to get better at saying no and saying, look, this is our policy. This is how we do it. If you don't want to work with us, don't work with us. And this other difficult client was talking about like, I don't know from an hours perspective, I don't know what you're doing. It's like, look, you're not, if you're hiring me for hours, get the hell out of here. Go find somebody else because that's not how we work. You're hiring me because of my expertise, man. You're hiring me because of what we know, not because how much hours we're going to put into it. We'll put in the hours, but it's the expertise that you're hiring. And that's what I'm charging you for. If I just charge you for the hour, I don't know how much it's going to go into, but I could probably charge you more because I'm willing to push more for certain clients that I just really enjoy working with. So in the end, like I just, I don't know. It's, it's a part of me, like I said in the Gab episode, wants to be a dick. Like I really want to tell people off and I'm starting to get better at it in a way and telling people off and really standing up for myself, for self in a way. I don't want to make it seem like I'm just a pushover, but at the same time, I want to love everybody and I want to be nice to everybody. But sometimes I just got to have to be a dick and just like F off, go away. And I'm, I'm starting to be better at that because with one of the difficult clients we had we had some good yelling matches and it felt good it felt great because i said everything i needed to say to this person we have a good relationship now but i'm just saying like i mean it's a cordial relationship it's not like we're friends i don't want i wouldn't consider us friends but at the same time like it's cordial enough like but i should you know i'll be better at firing people right away i think hey this is our process and i'm gonna take a stand here's a land line in the sand all right Hope that was useful to you. <laughs> Let me know. Give me some feedback, guys, because I do love hearing from everyone that listens to the podcast. And the amazing thing is this amazes me any, every single time. Like the caliber of people that listen to the show is really, really humbling. There are people way more successful than me who are listening to the show, and that really humbles me every single time. 
So I really do appreciate you tuning in. Please reach out to me. If you want to have like a fireside chat, I asked one of my friends, Gonzalo, to come on. Let's do this together because I got such good feedback from the Gab episode. Gonzalo is a really good friend of mine. He would ask me honest questions and he would have con- obvious, like an honest conversation with me. So he's coming on. But if you want to do that same thing, please let me know and let's get honest. Like Because if you want me to be honest, I don't know what you really want me to be personal about, but I'm a pretty open guy. So I'm happy to share everything that I can that involves me in particular, if you like. All right, let me know, guys. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate you really, truly from the bottom of my heart. I love meeting new people in the audience. I love hearing from you. So if you ever want to pick my brain, just email me anytime. I do all my calls on Tuesday. I'm happy to put you in if there's a time that works out for uh, for us. And if you want to do the fireside chat, just email me. Actually, put the subject line, either personal struggle or fireside chat in there. And let's do one together. I'd love to hear more about you too. Thank you so much for tuning in. I wanted to keep it shorter, under 15 minutes, but it's <laughs> let's see where it ends up. Thank you guys, and I'll see you on the next chat. Bye.